Hello, I'm Lawrence Belden Smythe, English truth seeker at large in the United States, uncovering its unusual oddities. Nothing will stop me in my pursuit of the truth until, of course, my visa expires, then I'll have to stop, but maybe I can get an extension. Anyway, until that time, the quest goes on. My research revealed an unusual music genre known as country music. Its headquarters is Nashville, Tennessee, and I wanted to learn more. My investigation led me to a beautiful and sweet-smelling singer-songwriter who shared her secrets for inspiration and possibly a lot more. I discovered what Grand Ole Opry actually means in English, and I set the stage for the world premiere of a Belden Smythe original. Hello, Nashville! To discover the rest, you'll just have to keep watching, uh, obviously, because my name is Lawrence and this is America. I pack my favorite trousers, my toothbrush and my comb, cause America is calling me. The city of Nashville in the state of Tennessee is awash with all things country. My research revealed country music was a musical styling created by American rural folk, and apparently Nashville was a rurally oriented place way back when. The new sound was a hit with the locals, who were charmed by the performers, and quite probably the music. But what exactly is this bizarre musical styling? To uncover more, it was necessary to penetrate the heart of this culture with a visit to what I'm told is a gourmet high point of country cuisine and a meeting with a country singer-songwriter named Rebecca Lynn Howard. Miss Howard has been plucking her guitar and plumbing her creative depths for several years now after arriving in Nashville from a nearby Kentucky mountain range. Her efforts have apparently paid off. I'm told she's had record deals, gone on tours and basked in the glow of fans. She actually looks pretty good for a country singer. Uh, not that I'm saying country singers are usually trolls. I'm sure they're all lovely. At least the female ones. The men are probably more manly. Or not. Depends on what they want, I suppose. Look, I, I just wanted to say Miss Howard looks good on this video. That was all. Nothing else. I promise. Anyway, the truth about all these things, including attractiveness, or lack thereof, is always revealed in a one-on-one -on -one encounter with a seasoned journalistic professional. Preferably a dashing Englishman. Uh, you're, a, you're a country singer, uh -huh. and, you, and you write your own songs. Yes. Yeah. I, uh... Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> My guest ordered breakfast for us, featuring local favourites, salted ham, eggs, and something called grits, which looked pre-chewed. So tell me about uh, writing country music. Country music is kind of, um, I guess, notorious for storytelling really relating to people's lives and real life issues. As Rebecca dribbled on about something or other, it should be noted the way her delicious smelling hair cascaded across her beautiful face, as if framing an angel. Sometimes I draw inspiration from just watching people's lives and drawing from their experiences, and then the best way is drawing from your own experience, obviously. Clearly, one breakfast of local delicacies and grits was not enough to extract all the information this captivating country chanteurs had to offer. Citing my throbbing desire for the truth, I persuaded this gifted goddess to reveal her secret places for songwriting inspiration. What is this place? Well, this place is the Ryman Auditorium. It's the mother church of country music. This just seemed like the most fitting place for that inspiration I was telling you about. This old building began life as a church. I think Rebecca told me it was built by a man named Alan Ryman, who was a trained circus clown and practicing nudist. Or maybe it was Methodist. But whatever she said, I'm sure it was true. No one that pretty needs to lie. So, have you performed here before? I have, many times. I like to play here with just me and my guitar. And when I write a new song that I'm really excited about, it's always such an honor to share it here on this stage and, and try it out on the audience and see what songs connect to people. So you spend a lot of time on the road? I, I have spent the biggest majority of the past 10 years on the road. So it's hard to put down roots? It is, you know, it, it, it kind of makes you feel a little unstable at times, just like, you know, where's my home? Is it, you know, in the back of a tour bus? But So you probably don't have a boyfriend then? No, I don't, I don't have a boyfriend. Next stop was wherever Rebecca wanted to go, 
which happened to be her local guitar shop. Apparently she wanted to play with more than just my heartstrings. Did I mention she smelled gorgeous? This one looks pretty. Let's see what this sounds like. Here, let's find a comfortable place to sit and try this one out. Our final stop was a local park filled with tiled dragon shapes. Apparently, Rebecca comes here for peaceful contemplation. It was here this reporter suggested Miss Howard join the Belden Smythe reporting team as executive romantic assistant. Unfortunately, Miss Howard announced her hair needed urgent washing and departed. I'm told in America that's called a brush off. Fine, not like I fancied her anyway. Plenty of fish in the sea for this globe trotting trutherist. Next, I bury my pain, scrape myself together, and probe a country music legend, Crystal Gale. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, investigating the American cultural phenomenon known as country music. Nashville and country music go hand in hand, which is something I can't say about me and the modestly talented singer Rebecca Lynn Howard. Despite an in-depth interview and world-class wooing, Miss Howard spurned this reporter's amorous affections. If one's romantic hopes are dashed by a local performer who wasn't that pretty anyway, then the journalist's code demands one use local measures to relieve the pain, if there were any pain, which there wasn't. Well, not much anyway. So I decided to write a country song and test the theory that this genre is built on broken hearts. Alas, despite some knowledge of the guitar and singing and some talent in both areas, the intricacies of the country music song proved elusive. Clearly expert assistance in grappling with this most American creation was required. In Nashville, big country music stars are easy to spot as they open shops. Crystal Gale, superstar from the 70s with her hit song about spontaneous eye color change, in her case, brown to blue, is a perfect example. She agreed to meet me at her shop called Crystals, which sells crystals and crystal type objects. And what is, what is country music? Well, to me, country music is just great music, good music. It's, it's, I, I don't really talk about country as a style because country is made up of all many uh, different types of music in my mind. Uh, you can hear bluegrass, you can hear the folk, you can hear uh, the little M MOR, middle of the road, or you can hear the real, real um, country, country like Rocky Top, the songs. It's just music that uh, I think hits the heart. <laughs> I think I always felt how, how, or why, why me? Why have I had the success when I know that there's so many people out there that are so talented? You know, I, I feel very fortunate that I had the success that I've had. As we sipped English tea in horrible French China, I mean, why do they even bother? Crystal revealed she didn't write many songs, <laughs> but she did have advice for performing a country okay, song, uh, assuming it's already been written, of course. Do you ever fake it? <laughs> I've always said if I had all the heartache that I've sung about, I'd be in real poor shape. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to act, act a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Are there any tips that you could give me? Well, if you 
look at the words and you can um, think of the words and you know what you're singing about, you can put your heart into it. You can, you can uh, put yourself in that place and, and if you've got some heartache, I'm not sure what the, the name of the song or what it's about, but if it's got heartache, you can do it. Am I allowed to ask if Crystal Gale is your real name? Gale is my middle name. My sister Loretta thought of the name Crystal. She saw it on uh, a southern uh, hamburger chain called Crystal's. <laughs> They're a good hamburger. You were named after a hamburger chain? That's what I've heard. <laughs> this hamburger fan sister of Crystal Gale is a lady named Loretta Lynn. Apparently she sings too. After the interview, Crystal offered to help me purchase a gift, just in case I was hoping to buy the affection of a woman. Let's say an aspiring country singer, for example, who had rejected a previous advance and would be sorry when she realised what she was giving up. Oh, well, how much is this? Well, this that... She'd like one of these. Yes, what? she would what like one it? of those. What is it? That's my Grammy that I won for Don't It Make My Brown Eyes Blue. This is a real Grammy? That's a real Grammy. You're wow. Holding... This is the one for Don't, don't I yes, Hope... Yes, yes. Don't Make My Brown Eyes Blue. Fantastic. Wow. How much? She'd love it. <laughs> no, no, she would <laughs> Crystal didn't sell me the Grammy. Pity. Nashville is known as the heart of country music. It even has beautiful countryside lurking just outside city lines, offering instant songwriting inspiration. If one enjoys a song about roads and shrubbery and the occasional cow. But within this so-called heart of a city lies a place regarded as the biggest blood-gushing aorta, something called the Grand Ole Opry. The Opry's current home is a giant complex on the outer reaches of Nashville, a mecca-like structure that attracts music fans from all over country music land. What is it about this music that's so attractive? Oh, I just like the, the stories behind the songs. It's down to earth. A lot of times a country song just relates to the lifestyle that a lot of people listen to live. Uh, are there any great English country stars that you know of? Dolly Parton. It seems to be like a sort of predominantly white audience here tonight. Are there, uh, uh, it is, but for some reason I end up in it. I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> what is country music? It's the soul of the country. Man. It's where it started from. Which country? The world. <laughs> it was time to enter this grand old Opry, if only to get an English translation. My findings are revealed next. To date, the allure of this uniquely American musical genre known as country music was proving elusive. I'd come to Nashville, Tennessee seeking answers, and so far all I'd managed was a romantic rejection from an aspiring singer and tease known as Rebecca Lynn Howard. I'd also failed in efforts to write a country song about it, which is the local custom. So my search for more truth brought me to the doors of the Grand Old Opry, by all reports the inner sanctum of this bewildering musical style. It was time to go inside and learn more. Hello, I'm Lawrence Belden Smythe. Hi, Lawrence. And you're, Welcome. You are John Connolly. John Connolly. Very nice to meet you. Welcome to the Grand Ole Opry. Thank you. And and you are. Howdy. <laughs> no, this lady is not doing animal mating calls. She's faithfully recreating you, the greeting of a comedic uh, legend uh, named uh, Minnie Pearl. Uh, Americans of days past thought she was very funny. Wow. As I was shown the spectacular and history-drenched facility. John and the shrieking lady revealed the Opry is actually a radio show, the longest running in America. It's been broadcasting performances live for 80 plus years. The word Opry is country music's way of pronouncing opera. How quaint. But this stage has seen all of the biggest stars in this American musical styling and achieving membership in the organization is considered a great honor. Reminders of the past lurk everywhere in this place. Behind this door lives what's left of a country music star named Little Jimmy Dickens. Little Jimmy is an Opry institution, known for his funny songs and his flashy wardrobe. Apparently he was huge in the country scene back in the day. In popularity only, he's always been this short. How long have you been uh, working here? 
Well, I came here in November of 1948, so that makes me 58 years here with the Grand Ole Opry. Goodness me. I'm trying to find out what the essence of country music is. What, what is country music, in your, in your words? Country music is the uh, music of the people, I think, because it's so simple and down-to-earth and folksy that uh, people understand the lyrics and the... The, uh, and the meaning of what the song says and so forth, and I think that's what country music um, is. Before we go, could you give me a, uh, a couple of tips um, to, to, to turn just an ordinary singer, songwriter, or singer, a guitarist into a, into a country musician? What, what are the things that would define me that I would need to try and perfect if I was going to sing country? It would have to be in your heart, sir. In my heart? In your heart. Uh, uh, it would have to come from your heart, or you wouldn't uh, wouldn't be realistic. What makes a good country song? Oh, uh, I think old country, like not the you know the rappy stuff they're adding to it now. Well, let's see. There's got to be drinking, shootings. They're about love songs or drinking or something like that. Most of them. Divorces, lawyers, drinking beer. Gotta have woman drinking. Railroad, God, people, horses, children, everything. Happy songs, and there's sad songs, and there's prison songs. And it's country music, it's done by cowboys. Along with short men in big hats, the back halls of the Opry were chock full of musical talent, history, and gymnasium-style lockers. Whilst the latter proved useless, the musical talent bit offered the hope of providing more songwriting insights. I'm told a man named Eric Church is a rising star in this genre, even though I've never heard of him. So do you write about things that really happen in your life? I do. Sometimes to my own demise, yeah. <laughs> to your own demise? <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes it's uh, hard to keep secrets from people if you're always putting in a song, you know. So I got a song on my record about a, about a pregnancy test. And it was about, it's called Two Pink Lines, and it was my, uh, uh, my first attempt with, uh, you know, w waiting to see what the pregnancy test would, would turn out like. And I remember uh, I had to play it for my mom. And the first time I played it for my mom, you have to kind of come clean with what you've done in your, you know, your your younger years so stuff like that sometimes gets you in trouble when you when you sing about real life when you write songs about real life i think the downside is somebody who's writing about it is that sometimes you have to you have to wear your feelings on your sleeve you have to put that stuff out there but to me i mean those are the artists that i've always loved you know it seems like the country music seems to uh, be about very sort of uh, personal and passionate uh, uh -huh. things that happen in people's lives so i'd be yeah. concentrating on that well, I, I think, uh, to, you know what, to me as a songwriter, I think that uh, as long as you're true, you know, you're true to yourself and you tell the truth, and um, I, 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 don't, I don't know if you should concentrate on making it one way or another way, you know, just kind of, as long as it's about your experience, and uh, I, think it'll, I think it'll appeal to, appeal to everybody. Can you give me a first line? I'll, I'll give you a co-writing credit. On the, on the song? Yeah. A first line. What, is it, what do you want it to be about? Uh, I'm broken heart, in love with someone. A broken heart? Are, are you broken hearted right now? A little bit. I woke up brokenhearted, in love with someone again. Can you do that? That's easy. Well, I, yeah, I could have done that. It's country music, not, not hard, man. It's hey. <clears throat> I woke up brokenhearted, looking for love again. Belden Smythe Church. <laughs> the, the Lennon and McCartney of the country world. Yeah, there you go. Hope it's a hit, man. Good luck with that. <laughs> After all the advice, watching from backstage, inspiration finally descended and a song emerged. This is a, this is a song. Nothing left to do now but perform it, which I do next. To fully understand the truth behind the bewildering musical form known as country music, one must write a song while in Nashville. Then one must venture on stage and perform it. The truth requires it. My songwriting effort, whilst torturous, was ultimately successful. So a local tavern named Tootsie's, known in Nashville as a honky-tonk bar, was selected for the debut of a Belden Smythe original. These bars are littered throughout town and are stuffed with heartbroken fans of alcohol, yelling and country music. These are also the places where stars are born, or at least discovered. Would an international journalism icon be the next country music legend? The crowd was giddy with anticipation. Or maybe it was the beer. This is a, this is a song that I, I wrote about a girl who broke my heart. 
From the first, how do you do? I fell for you. From the first, hello, way my heart did blow. When our eyes met, my heart got set to open up to yours. But I'm here strumming my own guitar. I know your fingers could be picking out this sweet country song, but I'm here strumming my own guitar tonight. Yes, I'm here strumming my own guitar tonight. It must be said the construction and performance of the song did have the effect of giving what Americans like to call closure to this investigation, but it did not deliver any offers to pursue the occupation of country music superstar. Thank you, Nashville! Country music is a fascinating American culture. It's filled with historic landmarks, graceful sweet legends, and beautiful sirens of song who promise much, but ultimately crush your heart like a snail in the roses. Above all, country music allows Americans to publicly reveal their most intimate feelings and opinions. Where Englishmen keep a stiff upper lip and have early heart attacks, Americans prefer shouting their pain from the rooftops or singing it from honky-tonk bar stages. I salute you, Nashville, and all of your country music hopefuls. The road to success is hard, but along the way, these would-be legends get to explore their emotional issues, create new ones, and sing in a pretty cool accent. So until next time, reporting and strumming from Nashville, Tennessee, this is Lawrence Belden-Smythe. <laughs>